In this Debaco University video, we'll be looking at phosphorus importance to plants in relation to a soil test report. So while these tests typically are not known for giving super accurate results, they can provide some indication. And really here, you'll be getting your test at a professional lab, and we're gonna look at phosphorus importance in a soil test report you would get from a professional lab. So first off, the impact of phosphorus on plants. Phosphorus, or chemical or elemental symbol P, is essential for root development and the production of flowers and fruits. So as a result, it does get a lot of attention from growers. But you can see here is a couple of the things that are related to phosphorus, but root formation, promotion of flowers and fruits are typical roles associated with phosphorus. However, phosphorus is being regulated in more and more states. Uh, native Connecticut soils, and this is just using Connecticut as an example, and native Connecticut soils are generally low in phosphorus, and much of what is present is bound in both organic matter and inorganic forms not readily available to plants. However, over-application has led to a 2013 law regulating the use of phosphorus on established lawns. Phosphorus is a serious pollutant of inland waterways, leading to algal blooms and accompanying environmental and human health risks. And this has gotten to the point that new le legislation or legislation has been enacted to regulate the use of phosphorus in soils. So realize that this is a, can be a very serious concern. So when we're looking at these phosphorus levels, phosphorus is most available in soil pH around 6.5 and during moist, warm conditions. Soil tests provide an estimate of the amount of readily available phosphorus and recommendations are made accordingly. The goal here is if it's very acidic, very alkaline, a lot of that phosphorus is locked up, that pH just right, we have a lot of the phosphorus being plant available. Now what uh, impacts the plant availability of this phosphorus? And there's kind of a combination of factors uh, that do impact its availability. As I mentioned before, of course, pH is one of them. Um, but we're also looking at organic matter. Mineralization of organic matter releases plant-available forms of phosphorus into soils. Organic molecules can also reduce phosphorus retention, increasing the amount of available forms. Clay content in soils. Cl soils with higher clay content have high phosphorus retention capacities, simply because clay particles have a very large surface area per unit volume, which can absorb phosphorus very easily. The mineralogy of the soil. Mineral composition of soil influences the phosphorus absorption capacity. Example, soils with high content of aluminum or iron ions iron ions tend to have the greatest phosphorus absorption capacity, which will decrease its availability to plants. As I mentioned before, soil pH, optimum pH is between six and seven, which results in the maximum phosphorus avail availability. Low pH, acidic soils have greater amounts of aluminum and iron, which form strong bonds with the phosphate. High pH soils, when calcium is dominant cation, phosphate tends to pre pre precipitate with those calcium ions. And there's also other factors such as temperature, moisture, and soil aeration can also affect the rate of phosphorus mineralization from organic matter and decomposition. So in humid, warm condition climates, organic matter decomposes faster compared to cool, dry climates. And there's also erosion and potential runoff uh, that can also occur that. And to increase availability, we can also have weathering, um, dissolution, and uh, disabsorption as well. So how do we control how much phosphorus um, you add? Well, ad addition of phosphorus beyond the agronomic need of crops has minimal effect on crop yield. So why would you be adding more? However, the excess phosphorus is susceptible to loss through runoff and erosion. It can promote algal growth in freshwater systems, causing degradation of water quality. This is why it's important to know what your phosphorus levels are. And in some cases where you've had the optimum level or probably above optimum, you can purchase fertilizers that do not have any fertilizer in them. A 2404 is the example here, because you already know you've got enough phosphorus in your soil, so no need to add any more. And this uh, would offer you the other nutrients that you, your crops may need without running the risk of contributing to freshwater contamination through algal blooms and general runoff of excess phosphorus.